Hello, this is Farrell Vincent with Nation 506, and I just wanted to come to you guys with a kind of a quick update on um, this whole merger stuff. And, and I really wanted to make a video a while back on like the best practices on nation building. And I think with all the mergers coming out that are, you know, set to come out in this moment, it was a good time to really stop for a couple seconds and just kind of explain nation and world building a little bit. Um, so the big thing that, uh, you know, everyone needs to prepare for is that in every merger, there will be a chaos lands event, um, that will pop up uh, that chaos lands event. Um, of course will be shown here. Um, when it happens, you'll notif be notified via in-game mail, who are you merging with and like when you will be doing the chaos land event the winner of that event the top nation will be able to merge or sorry will be able to keep their number in the merger um so why is all that important well the top nation will then be able to have all of the same like area in terms of what exists where so like for instance you know these mines here that we currently have, we won't have them anymore because all of our flags will be pulled up, all of our alliance territory is removed, but they'll still be in the exact same location. So it's worth knowing the world that you're going to, maybe making a small city there just so that you can look around, get an idea, and really start to plot out the land. Because um, like if I were to remake an alliance here in 506, you know, I would aim for one of these densely populated areas of mines. Like, this is actually not a bad little area right in here. Because uh, you can see all the mines there. This is also not a bad one because, look, there's four different benefit buildings in, like, a couple of flags of each other. So just keep that in mind. Make sure that, you know, you have a, a good idea of where you're going. Um... There's also maps that divide up the nation, so basically it, it works in thirds, right? So, like, if you cut this kind of in a little bit of a line coming from the um, actual capital, right, you can start to divide up the land. I think they use the towers. I'm not sure. There's ways to do it where you can try to be fair to each nation, but really and truthfully, just getting a hold of them ahead of time and figuring out who's going into what section is a very good benefit. Um, the last, or sorry, not last, the, the next kind of piece of the nation slash world building that you really should think about um, is where you're ending up. So why is that important? We, in our merger, we got announced that we are... And, I mean, Camel's already starting to take back some of these comments, so take it with a grain of salt. I, I will wait until I have the in-game mail that ties into exactly what I'm about to say um, to officially say, yes, our merger is announced, and I'll make a video on that, too. Um, we have 473, 500, and 506. It benefits 473 to lose the Chaos Land event. Why? Because currently they're in a nation that, or sorry, in a globe and in a specific uranium mine setup. Like, they're not in our uranium mines. We don't have anyone in 473. They're in a different mine. Because they're in a different mine, they have to fight older nations because they're a younger nation within the mine that they're in, right? Um, I've seen as low as 485 in ours. So they would be able to kind of come up to this higher tier or sorry, this higher nation, this, you know, larger globe number, if you will, and be able to be big dogs in a smaller pool, <laughs> so to say. Um, they'd be able to get more uranium because they're going to be able to fight better. Uh, it also helps them to avoid, I can't remember if it's like 450 or 457 or 455 or whatever nation it is. There's one really scary nation in their globe that they share uranium mines with, um, and, I mean, those guys are dominant, so losing the event would be smart for them. So paying attention to that is always a big deal. Um, you know, we had the previous merger announcements, 
And in this previ previous merger announcement, right, it would have been really smart for some of these nations to intentionally lose their chaos lands, right? 485 is a great example. They ended up winning theirs, but if they lost, they had to jump back a globe. Um, same thing, you know, you can see here there's 492 and 596. 596 would have been a dream. Of course, 492 and 476 should go to 592. You're jumping back almost two globes. You're going to have such weak people to fight by comparison to the average level of your nation. So paying very close attention to that is highly, highly, highly recommended, right? Where am I ending up and why do we want to go there? It is almost, and I say almost, always preferable to go back a nation. The reason why it wouldn't be preferable is in the event of, you know, you're going to uh, the globes where some of these nations are coming from, the ones where I mentioned these big cities, right? So if you can jump back a, a globe or not necessarily share a globe with, you know, the likes of, I think it's 450. No, not 455. I have to look for it sometime. But, you know, if you can avoid sharing a globe with, you know, some of these merged nations that have, you know, what is that, 4C or 5C38s, you know what I mean? Like, I don't want to be in a globe with them. And I can tell you right now, my uranium mine globe does not have a nation that looks like this. Like, this is scary. And we don't have anyone that necessarily scares me like this. And this isn't even the bad nation. So just calling that out. Paying attention to that is a, a smart choice for your world building. Uh, and then kind of the last, I, I would suppose, tip really comes into once you get everything all set up and you get your mergers done, you get your alliance ter territory started, keep in mind there is an hour lockout uh, for each flag you place. So you can place your alliance hall. I think you can place one flag right away, or I don't know if that puts you immediately on cooldown. But long story short, each flag for the first week takes an hour. So being very deliberate with your flags is very smart. You don't want somebody to accidentally drop a flag that is meaningless and you have to wait an hour for it. Like, I would just make sure your uh, alliance members are fully aware that you do not want them to touch alliance flags for that week. And as an alliance leader be particular because you know if you're looking at 24 flags a day over the course of seven days you can get your whole alliance territory back down it's just going to take you all week um so yeah that is kind of everything i wanted to talk about again i'm kind of avoiding a little bit of the drama on this um i do want to acknowledge it though uh only that you know hey i understand where a lot of people are coming from like for me, I'm I have mixed feelings about the idea of four seventy three and um, five hundred only because they're nations that are very similar to five oh six. I mean, they do have a couple of stronger players, but they're very similar in the sense that they're kind of peaceful and they farm a lot, um, and so it feels a little bit like being picked last in dodgeball, right? We're getting these two nations, and we're not really going to be joining the group of the hunters and the warriors unless we bring these guys up to that standard, and it's not like 506 really has a good track record of fighting. Um, sure, there's individuals within my nation that can do it. You know, I know a lot of really strong fighters and leaders who could maybe help influence that, but it's up to them whether or not they want to. And the reason that's important to mention is it's not like you know, merging with another nation that already has an established track record of really strong warriors that we can then go and support. Instead, it is a group of, you know, nine or so alliances, uh, from what I did on my initial count, that are all really peaceful, trying to figure out how to be warriors together. And I think that's a little harder. So, um, I don't know, mixed bag, but uh, I'm going to put a lot of effort into that. Again, uh, if you're one of those people like me and like a lot of others out there who kind of feels like you got picked last in dodgeball this time around, um, you know, so sorry that you're going through it too. Uh, I'm here with you, brother or sister, and uh, we'll be here to uh, commiserate together. So uh, if you guys have any, you know, 
comments, please, of course, leave them down below. Uh, and uh, please feel free to subscribe to the channel. Again, it really helps me out. Um, I absolutely am um, f just floored that I've gotten up to 398 subscribers as of making this video. Um, so that's really amazing. That's more like, uh, honestly, 400 more than I thought I was going to get because I figured YouTube had negative subscriber numbers. Um, but yeah, I just, I really sincerely appreciate it. So thank you guys so much for your time.